All right, guys, welcome back to the third part of this chopper build. So, you guys haven't seen this, but this has been like the most, I haven't failed this much on a knife build. So very first set of scales, obviously you saw these, these cracked. Now a couple things about these real quick. Burl is not the best choice for this type of a knife. A lot of people hate burl altogether. I like it. Some people hate the way it looks. My wife thinks these are the, the ugliest scales she's ever seen. I like them. But anyways, this chopper is going to be subjected to a lot of impact force. It's a chopper, right? And uh, burl is an inherently weak material. You know, all the cracks and voids. And even though this stuff has been stabilized quite well, I'm not sure how they did it. I'm not sure if it's like resin and pregnant or what the process was, but when I drilled these out, there's a lot of plastic. Uh, a lot of people had said maybe my holes were too small. Uh, that's not the case. I mean, this is the fit that we have with the pins. That's a great fit. Uh, there's no clearance around the hole, but it's not tight by any stretch. And these go on and off just fine. The problem, the reason that broke is that when I was pulling these apart, I mean, I had these uh, together and apart about four times. When I went to pull it apart, I, I wasn't being cognizant to keep it parallel. And I just went tink and it, and it broke. That, that's my fault. There's purely, purely carelessness that broke these scales. If you take this and say if we had glued this to a piece of G10 liner, uh, that would have given a lot of structural integrity and kind of kept it all together. And I'm pretty sure we would not have broken these scales had I done that, uh, but we didn't do that, so they broke. Now, earlier this week, I was doing some filming and I... I monkeyed around with it probably for about 45 minutes and I could not get a nice fit so the G10 would, would slide in there and be nice and even and flush all around. And again, I thought, you know what? There's no sense doing this. If, if you can look carefully and see a gap, that's gonna suck. That's gonna, it's not worth it to me. So toss these out and now we are on to our fifth set of scales. Literally, this is five sets of scales I've made uh, for this week for this silly chopper knife. Now what I've done with these scales, I took a piece of G10, white G10 to glue everything to and then I took some orange and green and that's literally, that's pretty much what I'm down to now. I don't have a lot, of, I need to order some more scale material. But what I've done is I've just kind of chamfered these on my grinder and then we kind of put them in. So hopefully there'll be a joint like this, a joint like this. Hopefully it'll be all nice and clean and tight. I did these up yesterday. I've got the second pair still clamped up there. Um, so what we'll do today is we'll go ahead and clean these up, check them out. Hopefully they work. Also, I think with this, there'll be a pin in each segment. So that's going to kind of help keep everything together as well. But you know what? If these don't work out, I might end up just having to go with a solid piece of G10. It doesn't look as cool. I wanted just a little bit of pizzazz to this knife. Um, it's either that or I'm, I'm like this close to just taking this to the bandsaw and cutting it up into little pieces because there's that angry, frustrated child inside of me that thinks that that would make me feel so much better. So I hope it doesn't come to that. I really do. I don't want to cut this thing up, but it hasn't been heat treated yet. So I could just chop this up in my bands on no problem right now. Now, my idea behind this project was I wanted to take just like one day a week and, and for filming this. I mean, I've got all kinds of other knives going on. I think I've done nine knives this week, but I wanted to just, you know, film one day a week and hopefully in three weeks we'd have a knife done. We're over three weeks now and we don't even have a heat treated blade or a usable set of scales that we know of. So we really got to get this sucker finished up and, uh, Oh, from here on out, I hope I can engage my brain a little bit more and I hope things go a little smoother, but let's get on it. All right, guys, what do you think? <laughs> you think the fifth time is a charm? Oh my goodness, I sure hope so. Uh, so to glue these up, I just had this piece of steel and this is actually parchment paper because the epoxy won't stick to it at all. Works really well. I don't know, my first glance, they look like they could be all right, but I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not getting my hopes up. So we'll take this over to the grinder, clean up some of this crap, and then see, see if we've got some decent usable scales or not.
think we have something that works here. Uh, pretty, pretty glad to finally be at this point. So pretty happy with that. Nice tight fit up there. They're looking pretty even. Now I'm not entirely cranked on the color for these. I, th I don't know. It's not horrible, but I wanted something contrasting. I just didn't want the same old, same old thing. So that's why I did this, but definitely not my favorite colors. Not too crazy about this. We'll see. I just want to get this project done because I've got a bunch of other knife builds. I, you know, I've been doing a lot of, of heat treating with stainless steels. I've got some liquid nitrogen now and doing like cryo treatments and there's so much stuff that I want to do some video content on but I feel like I have to get this video out of the way so we're gonna do that also I've got some really fun kitchen knife builds coming up that is that is fun stuff so anyways we'll go ahead and grab our blade we'll go ahead and clamp this down here one other thing I've started using I got these these are canty twist clamps and I should almost I should almost do a tool time Tuesday on these sorry can't twist clamps these things are awesome I wish I wish I didn't wait so long to order them I'm really happy with these but anyways we'll go ahead we'll get some holes drilled in here start shaping start profiling and get this project on the go wouldn't that be funny if I broke those? No, that, that would not be funny. Alright guys, so I'm thinking about getting ready to heat treat this and I was just ready to turn my oven on and I realized that the, the quench tank that I normally use, this little guy, that's not going to be big enough for my blade. Uh, I poured the oil into this container. I know typically plastic's not the best, but it does work, uh, but I'm a little bit shy. I'd like to at least quench this much of it, so I'm going to have to go to town, grab some more canola oil and maybe even look for some type of a bigger container. I must have something out here that would work. but. We're gonna whip the town, see if we can grab some oil, cause uh, we gotta get on the quench here and then we'll keep going on the scales. Roll up the rim, I hope this one's a winner. Six liters of canola oil. And I'll tell you one thing, desperate times require desperate measures. Now I couldn't find any containers big enough to put my blade into at the dollar store. So hopefully this will work. I'll fill it right up with oil and then we'll stick it in here, give it the one-two swisheroo. I should be able to get a decent heat treat on it. Before when I was doing bigger blades, I had like a steel pipe that I welded a bottom plate onto and it was like, like that. But I think I left that outside and right now it's probably, probably under about that much snow. So we're gonna give this a try. Hopefully this works. I'm pretty sure we'll get a really, really good heat treat on this. Just using this. Now, some of you guys may not know, but I do have, I do use a proprietary heat treat uh, for my O1 tool steel, but I'm actually, I'm gonna share that with you right now. I'm gonna give you my big secret. I'm gonna show you how I heat treat my blades. That's it, right there, it's flies. I put flies in my heat treat oil, and it really helps the grain structure of the steel come together. <laughs> of course not. Uh, obviously, that must have been from back in my shipping container <laughs> shop this summer. I had a real fly problem, if you remember, and, uh, Anyways, there's still a couple friends hanging out in there, so they are going to be part of the heat treat for this blade. Alright guys, you think I won or not? Uh, for those of you who may not know, Tim Hortons is a coffee chain in Canada. And uh, you know, this is their extra large size, a good hearty amount of coffee. And every now and then they've got these contests, I think they do it twice a year, where they have prizes printed in the rim. Uh, either a prize or a non-prize. And a lot of people, they sit there and take their teeth and they, they use their teeth to open them. 
But that is not the right way to roll up one of these rims. So here it is. Uh, take your arrow, this is roughly where the prize is. Hold it like this, a little push, a little roll, boom. Please play again. Now, in hopes that you would learn from my mistakes, the canola oil in that container was a bad idea. This, this is canola oil. On my boots, on my pants, on all over the floor. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. That's, uh, this is my least favorite part of the process for sure. Not a fan of hand sanding. But it's a necessary evil, I suppose. My Windex. Uh, one question I get all the time, all the time, a lot, is why do I use Windex? And I've addressed it several times, but the biggest reason is just I find it leaves a cleaner finish on the blades. I don't know, I just like it. Uh, you know, you, you can use water. I, I find a lot of these sandpapers work a lot better when you're sanding wet. This is tight. And, um, and so I just, I like Windex. I actually find that it, it leaves a much cleaner finish on the blades, the actual surface finish. And uh, that's why I use Windex. All right, so I'm in the middle of hand sanding this fuller and I kind of got to thinking it might not be the best to use my contact wheels. I was just wrapping sandpaper around there, but really that could wear out, wear this out. And I don't, I don't really want to. I don't think it's necessarily the wisest thing to do. So I had this piece of Teflon kicking around and I just turned it down on my lathe to the diameter that I need for this groove right here. And then I can actually just use it. I wrap my sandpaper around there and I can get into that fuller and sand it. Especially right up in here, that's a tough spot, but it's coming pretty good. We're getting almost all the little lines from grinding it this way. Those are almost gone, so I'm just gonna keep on rolling. All right, we've let this thing dry for about three, four hours here. And uh, obviously this is a, a new day from the start of this video. But let's see, let's see where we're at here. Oh, I don't know about those colors. I just don't know about those colors, but 
it actually feels feels really good that's just the right thickness i'm not gonna have to take this down too thin it feels fantastic and even that's even before shaping so obviously while we're shaping we're gonna be careful of this and then we'll leave this on here I'm not entirely sure I was, I was thinking about maybe doing a heavily angled shape but then i'm also thinking about some type of a coke bottle shape to make it super comfy i don't know i think we're gonna go uh we're gonna go for comfort on this one especially what's its intended use i mean it's gonna be a choppy one make sure you've got a really good grip on there I thought since we kind of we've kind of got angular lines here and here and here and here and there and there and there, I thought it might be kind of cool to do really harsh angles on the handle, but I think we might actually kind of go for more of a performance base type grip. But anyways, let's start grinding this sucker down.
All right, guys. Well, to tell you the truth, I did not think that this knife would ever get finished. Uh, I have never had such a hard time making a knife as I did with this one. You know, I guess the lessons that this knife has forced me to learn, uh, the two very good lessons, uh, patience and persistence. Uh, with the five sets of scales, with even, even stuff like spilling the canola oil, that took me two and a half hours to clean up. I shot over 161 gigabytes worth of footage just for this third part of this series, and that's because I had so many failures and I filmed them all. Um, even the edit, like this edit has taken me over three times what I typically would spend editing a video, and I don't know what it is, but that's just kind of how it is sometimes. Uh, you know, I've made knives before, you guys have seen me make knives. I'm not an expert, but typically I'll have an idea and I'll kind of think what the processes and the different steps are. You go through those and you come out at the end of it and say, yes, that's pretty much what I was hoping for. Not the case with this build. And I guess if I could just impart one thing to, to you viewers, especially people are getting into knife making, new knife makers, you guys are learning and I'm sure you're struggling. Uh, we all struggle. This video, this knife is me struggling at my hardest. It was absolutely brutal. I quit several times and for some reason I picked it back up again, but I was convinced that this knife would never exist. But I'm glad I stuck with it. At the end of it, we've got the knife done, we've got the video to prove it, and uh, we've got a very valuable lesson learned. So hopefully if there's nothing else, you can take that away. Anyways, I've got one other question. I'd like some feedback from you guys. I'm thinking about taking some of the footage from these vlog style builds, these multi-part builds, and uh, recompiling them into tutorials. So taking out all the fluff, uh, just single standalone how-to videos with a voiceover, walk you through all the steps, that kind of a thing. Uh, let me know if you would find value in something like that. Cause you know, I've got a lot of these builds that I could actually just start editing and doing voiceovers on. And uh, they seem to do fairly well too. I know a lot of people don't really like watching the vlog style builds, but anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there kind of curious what your thoughts are and guys I sure do appreciate you watching this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so you can click on that little circle at the bottom there that simple little life logo and that will subscribe you thank you guys so much for watching cheers